Formula One news there at the end of the sport. Now on uh, France Frank has time for today's Asia Live. So here is Asia Live then. Today we're heading, in fact, to Singapore, talking to our correspondent there, Carrie Notton. Uh, once again, uh, Carrie, the big story there, the haze, that massive cloud of smoke that uh, choked Singapore and southern Malaysia for days in June. And I gather that uh, Indonesian farmers taking legal action now against the president. Is that right? Well, this haze throughout, if you remember well, was coming from the island of Rio, Rio and uh, t yesterday exactly, uh, villagers from five villi uh, villagers from five villages, sorry, from Rio, have filled this class action suit. So basically, uh, environmental NGOs have filed it for themselves, of course, but they're reproaching two things to President Yudo, Yudo Yono, sorry. The first one, not to have tried enough to protect their lives and the consequences on their uh, health. Um, you can imagine we had we have reached a level of index of pollution of seven seven hundred this summer in Malaysia. So you can imagine how much worse uh, it was in Rio for these uh, villagers. Uh, the second thing they really uh, reproached to President Yudo you know, not to have tried enough to curb down uh, the slash and burn land clearance uh, practice, which is actually an illegal practice. But we can see that it's pretty often uh, still. Um, uh, used in, in Indonesia. So basically, we'll see how, how well it will be. It's certainly one of the first uh, legal action like this, and we'll have uh, more news in a few weeks about that. And now at the same time, the World uh, Wildlife Fund, they've started an advertising campaign, a big message to Singaporean consumers that they may be contributing to uh, deforestization, uh, deforestization and uh, haze pollution. Well, it's a pretty pictorial campaign, like you imagine you're taking your subway or you're taking your bus and you have this big bottle of shampoo or big bottle of cooking oil in front of you, surrounded by a haze or a little cloud, which is, of course, symbolizes the haze, saying your shampoo, your cooking oil may have contributed to the haze last summer. So you can imagine that people here, it, we're, we're in a very consumerist society in Singapore, and people are not conscious, fully conscious, that their direct co daily consumption can have a link on uh, on the deforestation in, in Indonesia. Um, th that's what has been in the debate like last summer when the haze happened, like a lot of think tanks here said we have to responsabilize consumers. We have to know that 10% of tropical forest is hosted in Indonesia and a big part of the biodiversity has disappeared for the recent years because of uh, palm oil plantation. Carrie, thanks very much. Carrie Nathan joining us there from uh, Singapore. I'll learn how to say that word as well, shall I? Now, from the haze to uh, luxury cars, because we're talking today about the uh, Bufori, one of the rare made-in-Asia luxury cars, which is the choice for sultans and Chinese millionaires. Three international luxury car makers, in fact, have gone bankrupt this year alone. But Bufori is still going strong, selling around 60 a year, a direct competitor to Rolls-Royce or Ferrari, with a price tag of up to €300,000. Well, our reporters Ode Ruo, Carrie Noten and Thomas Waterhouse give us a tour of the production line. It's a car that blends in well with Malaysia's colonial landscape. The Bufori is driven by no less than two sultans and is also the favoured car of billionaire tycoon Yo Chong Lei. This model was a gift from his seven children for his 80th birthday. It even has his monogram proudly displayed on the bonnet. The Bufori is the brainchild of one Australian who built the first model in his garage 25 years ago. Unhappy with the performance of other luxury cars, but still madly in love with the style of the 1930s. Word of mouth soon spread, and when a group of Malaysians heard about the car, they invited him to set up production in Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia is the last place on the planet you would expect to find a, a, a car like a Bufori. If this, car, if this car came from Detroit, if it came from Europe, if it came from Australia, you could probably understand it, you can probably comprehend it. And one of Bufori's many trade secrets, its bodywork is actually moulded from fabric. Carbon fibre gives you incredible tensile strength. Kevlar gives you incredible impact resistance. When you weave the two fabrics together, you get the best of both worlds. It's as simple as that. This makes the Bufori seven times stronger than any other car. And with manufacturing done by hand and multiple customizations possible, clients can be sure their car is unique.
In the Bufori Geneva, the unique features that you can find, for example, is a Chinese tea set in the rear lounge. You can have a fridge, you can have a cigar humidor, you can have a minibar, you can have a shisha, an electric shisha for the Middle East that's uh, very popular, actually. Um, you can have your name embroidered in the seat, you can have picnic trays, a multimedia system. Actually, the possibilities are endless. That's why between 3,000 and 9,000 hours of work are required for just one Bufori, compared to 450 for a Phantom Rolls-Royce. This German doctor has ordered Bufori's latest model, and today he's come to choose his colour scheme. Having such a say in the car's design is something he relishes. I, I have a Volvo as a family car, I have a Mercedes for travelling, uh, for business trips, and a Porsche to drive fast. And this is, is a car which which is fun, which is more fun. I like the Porsche, but it's nothing special. It's nice to drive and that's it. It looks nice, but this Bofori is something that I, I think I build it. His Roadster will be the first of its kind on German roads next year, and perhaps the only one, as Bufori exports 90% of its cars to China, Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Looks pretty smart to me. I wonder if they'll ever start selling in Europe. Not that I could ever afford one, of course. That was uh, today's Asia Live here on Fonsland Cat. So that's all from me uh, for now, anyway, for Live, on, uh, live from Paris. I'm back, uh, of course, in an hour's time. Cyril Vanier will be here next. He'll be talking to our correspondent in Moscow on the latest Russian perspective over Syria. And a little later in his hour in focus, meet the faithful who are defying the Vatican. Women ordained priests despite automatic excommunication by the Catholic Church. We're going to be attending a very discreet service in focus a little bit later on in uh, Cyril's hour, which will be with you right after the break. So don't go away here on France Fancat.